Greetings, I am Hans, and I finally upgraded this chair, which is uh, well overdue. Anyway, last time we finally got our 2D tile map in and looking nice, which is great. Uh, but as you can see, Scarfy goes off the screen, the camera doesn't follow him. So that is today's task, to get the camera to follow our main character. So let's get started. Looking at the existing code, you'll see that we set a static camera offset to the middle of the screen, point the camera at a specific spot, and then that's that. Whereas what we actually want is we want the camera to look at the player avatar. Now, Raylib does have both a 2D and a 3D camera, but they only handle the graphic side of things. They don't do any tracking. So I have created a tracking camera 2D, which is both a Raylib camera 2D and an actor in our scene, which makes it easy to add into the scene. We could even have it draw itself, but what we actually want to do is to look at the camera, look through the camera, sorry, not looking at the camera. And I have created this set target ma uh, method in the camera to tell it which object it should look at. And we're going to use that now. So over to Scarfy scene. Down the bottom, we say camera set target to player avatar. And we'll save and build that. And oh, it doesn't like that because player avatar is not an actor, uh, but Scarfy is. So let's just change that to Scarfy and try again. And that builds successfully this time, but. It's still not going to work because we haven't written the code. So you can see Scarfy goes off the screen. We need to write the code for updating the, track, uh, the tracking camera. So the update method here, as you'll see, there's a, there's a big fix me here. So what I'm going to do is, or what I want to do is I want to use the photography rule of thirds. So have Scarfy roughly a third from the side of the screen from whichever side of the screen he has his back to, which means if he's facing, if he, if Scarf is heading in this direction, then he should be a third from this end of the screen so that you see more of what's ahead of him. Vertically, I think I'll just try to put him in the middle of the screen, subject to, of course, the boundaries. We don't want the camera going off the boundary of the 2D scene. So let's start writing that code. Uh, first things we'll need to do is we'll need to get the tracking camera's 2D position. And because it's an actor, where do I have, oh yeah, I need to go up here. Because it's an actor in our scene, we can just look at the actor class and you'll see there's a, a, a 2D position and 2D velocity. So let's get the difference between the position, the, the camera's position and the target's position. And of course, I think for safety, we should put in here a safety check. If there is no target, then we do nothing. Uh, always good to make sure you don't crash. And let's have a quick reminder of what this update method is supposed to return. Returns true if the actor exists. So we should always return true because we don't want the camera to disappear on us. And now we want to know the difference between where the camera is pointing and where the player is. Let's call, just call that diff target position minus our position. For clarity, let's use this, this position. I think maybe let's, let for the initial shot, let's simplify it to just try to put the, uh, the player in the middle of the screen. So that's the difference. And obviously we would like to move the camera to look at that position, but not, not too fast. So I think what we should do is add in a sort of uh, an acceleration factor. So we have a, an acceleration factor. Let's call it Excel. Yeah, I just call it acceleration. And this is one of those things we're just going to have to take a guess at uh, how big that should be. I'm going to say let's let's make the Let's make it uh, change about 10%, 10% of the difference between the two. Uh, yeah, some of this is just going to be experimentation to see what works. 
So I'm going to pause the video now uh, because it's kind of boring watching people write code manually. And I'll switch it back on when I have something to show. All right, I'm back after some experimentation. So I did have to make some other changes as well. The tiling and the tile map display was broken, so I had to fix that. Some, some changing here needed to uh, account for the screen origin. In terms of the camera tracking, uh, this is what I have here. So we calculate the difference, we multiply it by the acceleration to adjust the velocity, and then we update the position by the velocity. However, there is a problem with this. Um, Oh, the camera's rather unstable. It's overshooting. So it's it's trying to get Scarfy in the middle of the screen. You can see the camera's sort of tracking, but this is going to make people dizzy, nauseous, and probably throw up very quickly instead of enjoying the game. So what we can do, instead of accumulating the difference, we will change it to the velocity to equal a proportion of the difference. So let's try that. And if you are somebody who has studied engineering and control systems, you will know that this is also not good enough. As you can see, it's lagging behind. It's not going to catch up until Scarfy stops walking. So we need something a bit more sophisticated. And this is where you go to your engineering school, your old engineering school books. Uh, control systems, there's something called a PID controller, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, uh, used extensively in control systems, control systems for machines. Uh, this is what we are going to use. Well, actually, we'll, we'll use a, a lighter version of it. Proportional Integral, we'll, we'll drop the derivative. I don't think we need it. Uh, in order to get this camera to track correctly. This is exactly the kind of thing that the a PID controller is good for. I will start implementing that. So we're going to need more than just an acceleration. We're going to convert this to PI control. So back to the header file, and we're going to change this to the proportional factor, and we're going to have an integral, integral factor. Let's call that in. Oh yeah, I'll just call it integral factor. A bit wordy, but be clear what they are. It's been a very long time since I have done control systems work, so I might be a little bit rusty. Might need to do a little bit of experimentation to get this correct. Just make both factors the same for now. Uh, these will need tuning later. And then down here, we change this to, I think it was a prop factor, and we create the integral factor default as well. Let's check, double check that I've got there. Yes, prop factor, integral factor. And now the velocity is equal to the, the difference between where it should be looking and where it is times the proportional factor. Uh, this section is, as I say, proportional to the error. I should probably call this the error just to make it clear. Uh, and I'll say this is a basic PI controller and I'll reference the Wikipedia <laughs> article. Not that the Wikipedia article is necessarily the best explanation, but it's one of the easiest ones for me to refer to. And now we need the integral. So the integral looks at the previous velocity. The, 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 the velocity, previous velocity is basically uh, a memory of what the previous error was. Well, multiplied by the, the proportional factor. And we will multiply the velocity, the previous velocity by the integral factor. And let's just see how that goes. Oh, right, we need to change this to error. And this is one thing about game programming, you do need to get comfortable with mathematics and uh, especially vector algebra. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's see if it can catch up. Uh, it looks like I got some adjustment to do. Yeah, not, not catching up. Okay. I'll pause the video again and do the experimentation that I need to do to, to get this working correctly. Okay, I've got it working. So the camera will now track Scarfy around wherever he goes and keep him roughly in the center of the screen. I decided to go with a proper integral. So integral of the error, which follows the way that a PID controller is supposed to work. 
Uh, and I also added a target radius. So what this does is if the camera is close enough to the target object, then I will zero out the integral. Because if I don't do this, maybe I'll comment out that code and let you sh and show you, then you can get overshoot and oscillations, which is a known characteristic of PID controllers. So yeah, you can see it's, it's, it's oscillating all over the place. It will center on Scarfy, but in the meantime, it can bounce all over the place. I could adjust the PI factors, the, the multipliers, but I decided this is a much nicer effect. So once, once it gets close, it basically changes to effectively a, a proportional controller. Well, almost a proportional controller. So it, it resets the integrals so we do not get the same overshoot and oscillations that a classic PI controller can do. So up next, we need to, as I said, I wanted to use the photography rule of thirds. There are two ways I could do that. I could adjust the this position here so I could insert it in here, or I can take advantage of the uh, Raylib camera's offset. I can mess with the offset, and I think that's what I'll do. So the offset gets adjusted to plus a sixth or minus a sixth. So right now it's, it's the offset is set to the middle of the screen. So if we move it by plus a sixth, it'll move to the right to a third from the outside, from the right-hand side, or a third from the left-hand side if we, if we do a negative. Um, I'll put that in here. So the, we're basing this on the direction that Scarfy is facing. So the way that this needs to be done is we need to look at the target's velocity. If the target's velocity is off to the right, then we want to put the um, offset off to the left, and if the, uh, obviously if Scarfy is facing the other direction, so the velocity, horizontal velocity is negative, then we'll uh, point in the other direction. And if Scarfy is stationary, then we'll leave it alone. We don't want the, the camera to be, to be messing with the camera's position that way. So let's write that in code. If target velocity dot y greater than zero, then we change this camera's, I think, set offset, and we need to get the screen screen dimensions, don't we? You know what, I'll pause this until I've written the code. Okay, I've implemented it the way I said, but it's not working, watch this. It jumps erratically, we don't get the smooth camera tracking that I wanted, and the reason is obvious. Setting the, the camera offset like this up here is going to completely bypass our camera tracking calculations. So I need to undo this and do it properly. I'll, I'll pause it again here and show you what it should look like. And I'm done. So here's the code. Again, we've, uh, we've maintained the basic uh, structure. If Scarfy is moving off to the right, then we move a target offset a sixth of the screen off to the left from the center so that we get it a third from the left hand side. And if he's going the other way, then we set the offset so that it's a third from the other side of the screen. What I've also done is I've realized that we can observe the target or Scarfy's velocity directly. So I've added that directly into the velocity and I'm using the PI controller just to correct for any offsets from where we actually want the camera to be pointing. And the reason for that is I was still getting oscillations after adjusting the, the PI factors yet again. And so it's, like it's just easier to track the target's velocity directly and then use the error just to fine tune where the camera is pointing. Let's have a look at what that looks like. And as you can see, Scarfy will move in one direction. The camera puts them roughly a third off the left side. We turn around and put a third off the other side. So you've always got more on screen of where Scarfy is heading than what's behind him, uh, which is, is useful. So 
I'm happy with the way that it's working. But you can see there's still a problem. Scalfy's walking right through the ground. Uh, not walking up the hill here, he's just walking straight through. And that's because collision detection with the ground and uh, with the terrain has not been done yet. But that is a task for next time. So that's it for today, everybody. And I will see you next time when I try to address the walking on the actual terrain rather than through it.